What's up everyone, it's DB and I'm back in Roblox Islands for another crate video. And this video is actually gonna be multi-purpose. One is I really need money. Look at, I've actually spent all my money. I've actually been spending way too much on white snowmen. And so I just, you know, when you're investing in a lot of stuff and you don't have a shop to make money, it's a little harder, so you need to grind for it. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make an awesome auto farm that is compatible, not only on PC, but also mobile, because all you need is to be able to click on the chest over and over and over. So, you know, as long as you have an auto clicker, it should work and I did show how to set up an auto clicker on iPhone. So if you're wondering, hey DB, I have an iPhone, how do I auto click? Definitely look that video up. So today we're gonna actually be going through a number of things. One is stats and I know, I know, I really don't want this video to turn into a math class. The problem is I get a lot of people that question the math on some of this stuff. So I did crunch the numbers heavily on this to a very, very detailed degree. Now, of course, this is just a recommendation. You could use totem disablers. You could upgrade your totems and such to really dial in. So if you wanna opt optimize this further, go for it. This video is really meant to keep things simple because I don't want it to be so complicated that you're just mind blown, right? This is not meant to be like the most optimized farm in the world, but it does get into stats that are well optimized. So let's go out here and I'm gonna show you, if you haven't seen Dom yet, Dom is the new guy, he's a wholesaler. So it's very important that you understand how this whole wholesaler works. So how this works is you go to this guy and you can actually sell crates of crops now. And these crates will actually give you more money than selling them to Tom over here individually. So, you know, Obviously you can go out here and you can sell these individually, except you can't sell seasonal crops, right? But you can sell seasonal crops to Dom here. Now you can wait for the different seasons, right? So you can wait for spring, fall and, and summer and such. What's nice about this is you can actually use your seasonal crops all the time now with Dom. So you do need a crate packer. This is gonna be important. So I'm gonna go through the different crops on each of these. So one by one and explain what the pros and cons are each of these and which one I would recommend because this is pretty overwhelming, right? Like, you know, you look at this and you think, well, DB, which one are we supposed to do like which farm you know oh must we must have to do the melons because that's the best one right but no not exactly so before i get into even more detail be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already it would help me a ton i spent a lot of time on this okay not only for me but also for you to help you make lots and lots of coins of the game so hopefully you don't mind hitting that like button for this so if you have other farms maybe you have a drill going maybe you've got like a food processor going maybe you've got refineries you know still press anything auto anything auto that you might have on your island is actually counting towards this limit and the limit is 80. So if you have like a still farm and 80 coal and you have a bunch of coal totems, every single time that coal drops to feed your smelter or your still mills or anything like that, that is actually counting towards your limit. So if all of a sudden you hit that limit, which is 80, then things are going to start despawning in your island. What does despawn mean? Despawn basically means they're going to get deleted. So they're going to get removed from your island. So if you imagine if you made like the tallest, you know, star fruit farm in the world, maybe you'd made it like, you know, a thousand totems. Well, you, you just basically broke your farm because by the time things are falling, they're despawning before they can even reach your chest because you got too much. It's just too much. And I wish the game didn't really have these limits, but they got to have limits or else you're going to crash the server. So they have these entity limits. I actually think they should increase it, but you know, they do have these entity limits. So you need to be careful with that. So that's why we limit things to 80 totems. So if all 80 totems were in sync with each other and actually drop things at once, then you wouldn't really have an issue with despawn because you're never gonna have more than 80 out at a time. Plus this does not require any kind of coal. So everything's 100% reliant on your totems. So we're pretty much good to go with the 80 totems. Now, if you have other farms going on, you may need to get like a totem disabler or something else to turn them off or just take the totems off of them and turn them off, so disable them. So the build we're about to use will work with anything except for oily crops. If you wanna use oily crops, you do need to add an industrial washing station so if you don't have one of those, this is what they look like. So this is an industrial washing station. You do need this to clean your oily crops, okay? They're pretty cheap. They're only going for anywhere between 150,000 to 200,000 right now. So they're really cheap to get, but um, it does add some complexity to your build. And I prefer the non-oily crops because it's just so much easier. So let's go back out here and explain a few things. Let's go through each crop real quick and I'll explain which one is best for you depending on your situation. So, and cause there's not really like a single great one, okay? There's not a single perfect one for you. Not everyone has like, you know, 10 million inside their coins. I mean, I don't even have 10 million right now, but I can get most of these things by just selling. I could, I could sell a snowman if I needed to. But here's the thing, not everyone even has a million coins, okay? So that's why I'm considering each and every one of you in your situation. So let's go over here. You are gonna need a crate packer. That's gonna be 10,000 coins. We're not even gonna count that inside of our budget here. All right, so let's dive straight into wheat here. So wheat's great because you don't have to actually trade for this, obviously. These five here, you can just straight up buy from Cletus here inside the hubs. 
so you don't have to worry about having economy XP. So that's what I like about these. Now, let me tell you about the downside of, of these three right here. These three will actually create oily crops, okay? So in order to be able to clean these, you do need the washing station. That does add some complexity and cost to these. And that means you might also have to, you know, actually like trade for that. So if you can't actually go and make your own very easily, which you could, but if you don't want to do that, then you're still going to need to trade. So the nice thing about wheat is it's really low cost of investment and it does only take about, it's going to take about 10 hours to recoup your investment. And when I say recoup, remember, you know, you spent money on this investment to make money, right? So you're basically building farms to be able to make money. And at some point things just kind of get a little ridiculous. Like if you were to do the watermelon farm, you're going to be spending like almost 60 million coins. At some point that doesn't make any sense because the watermelon farm, you know, you're looking at, you know, about 20 days to actually break even on that. That means you have to farm an AFK farm for 20 days to make up for the investment of doing this. So that is just crazy to me. I'm not going to spend myself. I'm not going to spend 20 days nonstop grinding the game just to make the money back that I spent on these things. Because then after that, you know, yeah, great. It's going to be a profit from there. But 20 days, that's crazy. So there's better ways to do it. So we are going to be making about a little over 200,000 coins per day on that. So it's going to take you about five days to actually make your first million. And so it's really slow going. I would say great for new players if you just want to make your first million. There's other crops that might be better for you. So coming over to tomatoes, the initial investment is going to be about 720,000 coins because you do need that industrial washing station. And um, that's going to be about 150,000 to 200,000, depending on where you get it. And of course you have the seeds and totems. So it's going to take you about 20 hours to recoup your investment. So, you know, two and a half days to really grind this out and get that money back. And you're only going to be making about 288,000 per day. So you're going to be making about 300,000 per day on tomatoes. Not really worth doing this, um, but you know, you will make your first million after three days, I guess. So so over here on potatoes, potatoes is very similar to tomatoes. The big difference here is you don't actually need the washing station. Now, to, now potatoes are currently bugged for me, so the totems weren't working for me. So I don't know if they they fixed that or if it's just isolated on my farm because it just wasn't doing anything. The totem was just sitting there. You know, it's only going to take you like 13 hours to recoup your investment. So that is still a lot of time for many players. I'm, I'm going to tell you 13 hours is still a long time to recoup an investment, but um, it's going to take you about a little under two days to start making a profit. Moving on to carrots carrots does require industrial washing station as well so that's a big downside so in the making of this video i actually did find a way to make this a way better farm by the way i'm not really going to do that we're going to make this a two-part series because i found something that's going to make your auto farm so much better i will explain that in the next video it does require an industrial washing station as well and you're going to make close to a million per day it's a little less than a million per day on this which is pretty good for carrots you know and to recoup you're going to you're looking at about nine hours to recoup your investment which isn't too bad so onions is actually similar to carrots except it's going to require about 1.6 million coins to actually set it up. It's going to take about 13 hours to recoup the investment because you're going to be making about 120,000 coins per hour, which is not a lot, to be honest. You know, there's better ways to do it, but for an AFK, it's not too bad. And you're looking at about a million per day. So about eight, you know, a million every eight hours, which is actually pretty good if you have a lot of time, especially if you're going to like maybe leave it running for, you know, an entire day, like 24 hours, you're looking at about 4 million coins. That's, that's a lot of coins in a 24 hour span. So not bad. It's it's a really good crop. You know, it does require the industrial washing station, which is the big inconvenience. Um, I'm not going to be showing you the industrial washing station in any of these builds because we're not going to do any of these. We're actually going to be doing radishes today. Now, moving on to star fruit. Star fruit is actually one of my favorites. Now, star fruit is going to be a little costlier because you have to trade for these. So you're going to need that economy XP. On top of that, seeds are actually costing about 30,000 a piece. So they're not cheap. And your totems are 150,000 a piece. So your investment is going to be about 28 million coins you might as well just you know assume you're going to need about 30 million coins total just in case and you know it's going to take you about 18 days to recoup that that investment 18 days think about that it's going to take you 18 days of grinding or 144 hours so it's basically 144 hours to you know recoup that investment now of course you can upgrade totems you can optimize things and you can shorten that but you know that's a that's a crazy stretch and it's only because the totems are so expensive so i would actually say stay away from star fruit now moving on to pumpkins and watermelon so pumpkins are actually these two are bugged currently with the conveyors now the devs are aware of that and they're you know they're looking into it but they are currently bugged so I had like a stack of 70 pumpkins stuck and it's happening to not just me it's happening to a lot of people on my discord so just be aware that these are currently bugged 
the initial investment for pumpkin would be about about 12 million coins um, if you're going to use my build and on top of that it's going to take you about seven days to recoup that investment so it's about 58 hours worth of grinding a little bit more than that and you're going to be making about 1.6 million per day it's pretty good it's actually quite surprising it's very profitable and if you were to grind 70 days straight you would actually make your first 100 million coins which is that's a long time in my opinion that's like two and that's over two months i'm not going to do that grind so you know it's it's a good crop it's great you know you definitely would need to optimize the downside here is that the pumpkin seeds are about 20,000 coins so still better than star fruit but bugs and such and trading and cost of seeds i would say there's something better here which we're going to get into next up is crate of melons which mel watermelons are crazy good so watermelons are incredible they're the most valuable crop currently obviously you can see if we click here you can see how much you can make you make 11,400 per crate that's a lot of coins let me tell you so right here we've got um, coins required you're looking at about 60 million coins to invest in this it's a crazy investment and you're only going to be making about 3 million coins per day so that's overnight you're going to make about 3 million coins that means it's going to take you about 20 days to break even so you're going to grind this back 20 days or 162 hours of grinding that's that's a lot of grinding of course you can optimize of course you can use you know there's a lot of ways you can actually make more than that but you know for the average person this is not the best way to go so moving on to radishes here so radishes are my favorite because of a couple things one is the investment's pretty low so seeds are going for about 12,000 oh by the way on melon watermelons um seeds are going for anywhere between 120,000 to 150,000 coins if you're lucky you can find it for less than 150,000 coins but most are charging an arm and a leg for these watermelon seeds so that's part of the cost there but going back to radishes they're only going for about 12,000 you know sometimes i mean i found i found some radish seeds for you know as low as 8,000 today between 8 and 10,000 so they're actually even cheaper but i'm just assume that you're going to spend about 14 to 15,000 coins just 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 assume that just because you're going to be buying so many of them but for the sake of math let's say they're worth 12,500 in that case your investment's going to be about 7.8 million which is not that bad so this one's really good if you're in my shoes where you can actually afford it so you're going to make about 250,000 coin per hour and that is the one we're going to be working with today that is actually my recommendation if you're going to go for it go for radishes plus each seed way cheaper than watermelons great great crop so i have 757 of them i didn't need that many unfortunately so i'm gonna have to resell some of these later but i only needed 540 and then we're going to need 80 radish totems so the radish totems are going to be a little expensive it's going to be about a million coins to be able to get your totems so we're going to get 30 more over here and we're going to start building this now again so i only need about seven just rounding up just to make sure we're safe we only need about seven seeds per totem so when we're designing this and it, it changes depending on the crop by the way so let's go and get over here we're going to get our packer we only need one packer i bought a bunch of them the other day but we only need one so we're going to put the exit here and then we're going to actually set up some in and out chests here now we are talking about crates <laughs> we're talking about crates so you don't need much here so we're going to go and just make a right turn and then we're going to put an industrial chest just in case we're doing other stuff and for some reason it fills up which would be a good problem for me all right so we got the packer here we got a chest and then we're gonna you know we obviously have the industrial chest just for overflow but we're gonna actually be auto clicking on this thing okay so we're just gonna pretty much open this and we're just gonna auto click that all day so what we need here is another conveyor we're gonna actually put two of them and the reason why i'm doing two of them is because we don't want things to bounce out right so we're gonna actually also use glass so let's go and get some glass out and we're gonna use glass so we can kind of see things while they're dropping so you're just basically making a little box here and then we're gonna funnel it down like that so you can see it's a little funnel so things are going to drop our crops are going to drop through here and then we're we put this here so they don't you know bounce out and then we're going to go ahead and put these here on the sides just again so things don't bounce out so the first layer does not have to be very high all right so we now we got that little funnel here each of these are going to require at least seven okay seven seeds so how we're going to do it is um i'm going to get my radish let me get my radish totem out so how it's going to work is we got our totem right and then we're going to have a conveyor in front like this and we have our opening which you're going to see in a little bit and then you got one two three now these can only reach three blocks away okay so there is a limit for totems they can only reach three blocks away so right there would be six seeds right but we need space for one more so the seventh is going to go it's just to the right of this totem so how this is going to work is we're going to actually offset just to guarantee that this totem doesn't actually share seeds with any other totem what we don't want to have happen is what happens every single time in this game where the totem actually starts stealing from the other totem seeds so because the reach is so long what happens with this guy is he's going to start taking all the seeds and crops from this totem here right so if you have you know for 
doing this process here, it's going to be like this, right? So you're basically repeating this pattern. But the problem is this guy is going to start taking seeds from this guy. What happens? This guy is going to have to start taking seeds from this guy and so on. It just gets crazy out of order. So how do we fix this? Really simple. Really, really, really simple. How we fix this is you're going to go up one level like this. Okay. And then you're going to alternate that once you're pretty much further along. So once you get over here and then this next one up here is going to be just one more up like that. And then you reset it. So every six blocks you're resetting because this totem right here, you can only reach to this. So that's where we're doing it this way. So this is actually kind of a new design for me. Typically I don't do it this way, but I really like this because it does, like I said, it guarantees it doesn't borrow from other crops. You really want to make sure crops don't start sliding too. There's such thing as a slide in this game. I've been playing this game a long time. So there's such thing as a seed slide. And what that means is if you have a big long row of totems like this and they have their dedicated crops, what happens is these seeds some somehow will end up getting planted to any other openings over here. And then what happens is you start, you start seeing this um, seed loss. So you'll actually start seeing like empty spots for your seeds because this totem over here has too many seeds and it doesn't have a place to put them anymore. So it just gets really wacky. Let me tell you, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of a bug, but I don't think they can fix it. So how do we solve this? We do it ourselves. So I'm going to be doing 16 totems per level here. And so why don't we go and get started with that? So pretty much how we're going to do this is the first group here is going to go sideways like this. And so of course we're going to do eight on each side. So we're looking at 16 blocks. Okay. So this is going to be one. And then we're going to go and put eight on both sides. So we're going to, it's okay. It's okay to leave the middle just kind of like this. So we're going to do eight on both sides. So we have eight on both sides, right? We can ignore the middle one. This is just our, this is just a marker. So from here, we're going to go up nine. So we're going nine blocks because again, we're counting these plus the middle. So we go up nine blocks, man. I, I kind of like bed wars. You know, I've been playing a lot of bed wars lately. I like that you can just stand there and build and it pushes you upwards. It's really nice. I'm kind of spoiled with it. Okay. So pretty much we're going to go all the way out here and we're going to build across here and we're going to put a stair right here because we're going to pretty much everything's going to filter down to this block and we're going to have it roll down that into this. So now we can go right here and we're going to build upwards across. How you do that does not matter to me. You can do this and then we can get rid of these and we do the same thing over here. And the nice thing about this are doing our second layers. We only need to do these stairs once. Okay. So we don't have to keep doing this for each layer that we do, thankfully. <laughs> All right. So we got our stairs. We can get rid of these. That was just to help you measure. And now what we can do is we can go across with this like this. And then we're going to make the other side here. So we're going to set up our conveyors right here. So starting with the number one. And then remember, we're going up like that, right? So this one's going to go up like this. And then we start back here and then we go up and then we go up again like that. And then we go up and you can ignore this corner here. It's totally okay. That could just go away. So we're going to repeat it like this. Now, when we're across from each other, we do have the concern with reach here because this is still close enough for this totem over here to borrow from this one. So how we fix that is we actually offset it. So this is going to actually be our third block here. This is going to be our lower block block here. And then it's going to be a totem. And there's going to be a conveyor. This is going to be the short one. This is going to be the double. Then we go back up to the third and we start back up. And then, you know, so we're trying our best to avoid the situation where things are borrowing from each other. Okay. That should be fine. We do have some risk here, but it's okay. It's not, it's not going to be terrible. We have an extra. Okay. So let's go ahead and get our conveyors out for each of these. So we're going to drop this conveyor is going to go right here so that it doesn't bounce stuff over here. So conveyor can be placed wherever it makes sense. So we're going to offset this a little bit. So we're to put these on the right side instead of the left side. Quick tip while you're building, just do like a column straight up to where you want to, you know, get to. Just do something like that. Cut out the bottom, place a spawn block and reset your character. And now you'll be on top. So that'll help you get up to places very quickly while you're building. When you're dealing with this kind of stuff, uniformity is not needed. You should not be able to drop crops straight onto the other conveyor. So that's why I offset them a certain way. So see how this one's offset? These are all offset. There's none of these should be direct on. So like this one is currently direct on. So we'd want to move this one so that this conveyor can't drop stuff onto this. Pretty straightforward, hopefully. All right, so everything has conveyors. So now we're gonna actually build out our space here. Let's get our grass out and let's set this up. So we need just a total of three out from here, like this. Now you don't have to do it like, you don't have to do it like this. You could just do the straight line if you're really worried, but I'm all about efficiency. So sometimes my designs are a little crazier than what you'd expect. All right, so you can see things are just offset, right? So it's basically like stairs. They've got three, three, and then two. So next up, we're gonna actually go ahead and set up our totems. So let's go place all these. So these are going to all go behind one conveyor, right? So one conveyor, one conveyor, just like that. And so each of our conveyors now are set up. So we're going to go ahead and set these up as well. Just basically 
plow each of these little sections. So that's looking pretty good. Let's go drop down here real quick. Let's put some glass in. Let's go and get rid of these two. These should be glass. So you're just basically making an opening. It's not hard to figure out. So you can see this stair is gonna go drop stuff in here. So we do need this to be sealed up. And you can see how I did this right here. There's just a slight opening. And what's nice about that, it's not gonna come down. It's gonna slow things down. What's gonna happen is these things are gonna hit this stair. It's gonna hit that wall in there and it's gonna drop down to the conveyors and we're good. And from here, we need this entire thing sealed in. I like to start with the stairs, the sides of the stairs like that. And we do both sides. It's been a long time since I've done a build. I'm really excited that they added this. We just go straight across on the top and we just fill all these in. And then we got to fill these in as well. All right. So we're completely sealed in now. So you can see that's all ready to go. So now what we can do is we should just run a test. So how we test it, we basically need to go down to our packer, set it to make sure it's set to radishes. So we don't want to start like losing radishes and then we're going to pop back up there and we're going to see if we have any radishes here. We should. Yep. So we got radishes here. What we're going to do is we're basically just going to drop them on the conveyor. We'll drop it on a few of these conveyors and let's make sure they actually made it into the crate packer. Yep. We got 16 in there. Cool. So it's working just fine. So now what that means is we can actually plant our radishes. So let's go ahead and plant these down again for radishes. You need only a little over six. So we use seven. So you always want to round up. Pretty cool looking. I honestly, that, that's, that's really neat. Okay, so now we're ready for our next level and how we do that is we do need to go up a little bit. So let's go ahead and get rid of that light. And we're gonna go up a little bit more, just enough to be able to come up so that you can cover the totem and we build a cross. And then what we're gonna do is build like this and we're gonna make the opening in a second. So now we make an opening in the center here and then we're gonna build a cross. We're basically making another frame. We're doing the same thing we did beneath us. When we're you know dropping stuff from here, there's a good chance that things are gonna fall onto these other conveyors. But what we don't wanna have happen is they fall on these seed blocks, right? So what's gonna happen here is we need to fill this all in. We need to do it all the way across again, like that. Pretty much just fill in whatever you can. It's okay if there's slight openings, but you wanna fill this all in. There we go. Now we just do the same thing on the other side. We could use glass if we wanted to. It looks prettier, obviously, but um, I wanna make sure it's clear for you what we're doing. So I'm using grass. Plus grass is a little less laggy, to be honest. Glass will actually lag you because all the transparency. Roblox does not like transparency. All right, so that is ready to go. Let me just do this one more block there. When you look down, you should barely see, a, you know, you should only see a couple openings. And the nice thing about that is if it does, you know, land on stuff, it's okay. Most of the time it's gonna hit that conveyor. So it should be all right. So going back up here, we're gonna do the same thing. Same exact layout. So you can see how big that, man, it's covering up my banner. Didn't think about that. I'm gonna have to move my banner. But you can see we got an awesome, awesome auto farm here. I'm actually legitimately gonna be using this. I'm gonna be AFKing a lot while I sleep. So this is gonna actually make me lots and lots of coins. So you're gonna see my coins going up very quickly. So yeah, you can see we're gonna actually wait for this to come through. You can see it's building up very quickly and another crate's gonna come out. Cool. So now we're at seven already, just in the making of this video. So that is awesome. We're gonna make so much money on this. So right after this video is done, I'm gonna actually start auto-clicking. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button and smash the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And I'm gonna head off and start AFK and this is gonna be awesome. Peace.